Basiru Diomayo Faye, Senegal's opposition candidate and a political newcomer who seems to be very popular among the country's disaffected youth, is set to be declared the next president of Senegal after his main rival Amadou Ba conceded defeat. Provisional results after Sunday's presidential vote showed Faye with about 53.7% and Ba with 36.2% based on tallies from 90% of polling stations in the first round vote, the Electoral Commission said on Monday. Earlier, ruling coalition candidate Ba called Faye to offer his congratulations. Congratulations once again to President Basiru Diome Faye. I wish him every success at the helm of our country. May God accompany him as he carries out his mission for the greatness of our nation and the well-being of our population organized under unprecedented conditions and through a thousand and one difficulties. The presidential election on March 24th will go down in our political history as one of the most important ever. The best organized, most transparent, most peaceful, and most sincere. Through this behavior, the Senegalese people have confirmed the good health of our democracy from urban centers to the depths of our countryside and in the diaspora. The population was strongly mobilized to remind voters of their high level of citizenship. By expressing their sovereignty in peace and serenity, our compatriots have confirmed our country's status as a major democracy. I reaffirm my gratitude to President Macky Sall for his trust and constant support, especially during these exciting moments in the life of the nation. I would like to thank all the leaders of our great coalition for their dedication, commitment in the field. After this important step, I remain more determined than ever to serve my country. Also, Senegal's outgoing president, Macky Sall, also congratulated Faye, hailing a victory for Senegalese democracy. Joining us now on the show is Ambassador Joe Keshi, a former Nigerian diplomat, and he'll be joined by Austin Aigbe, member, West Africa Democracy Solidarity Network. Good morning, gentlemen, and a warm welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, uh, Ambassador. Good morning, uh, Austin. Well, quickly, let's start with the significance of this development in, uh, you know, uh, Senegal, a country that uh, went through a lot. And then now, Macky Sall will have to leave on uh, April 2. And a man who came out of prison within 10 days uh, is now a uh, president. Uh, Senegal seems to have, uh, you know, survived what looked like a, an impending chaos, crisis, caused by uh, uh, Macky Sall and the uh, ruling uh, party. Let's start with you, Ambassador Keshi, and then Austin Aigbe. You can give us your perspective. Ambassador Keshi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ruben, and good morning again. I, I think, number one, uh, Senegal has uh, reaffirmed its uh, commitment to democracy. And as we have said on this your platform a couple of times, uh, it has um, had a good fortune of experiencing democracy, you know, since uh, its independence, and despite the antics of the outgoing presidents in the last couple of months, the outcome of yesterday's election and the fact that um, it has gone peacefully well and uh, all the candidates have uh, expressed their, uh, you know, uh, their congratulations to the new president, it's a pointer to what I've always said before, that look, in this part of the world, democracy is not receding. Democracy is not declining. When, you see, when people go to the polls, when millions of people go to the polls to vote and their votes count, democracy, of course, will survive. But in a situation where their votes do not count and the electoral officers, you know, uh, do misbehave, you know, you create a problem. So we must give credit to everybody, even including President uh, uh, Maxell, you know, who eventually, you know, threw in the towel and allowed the democratic process to, you know, to go to its uh, logical, uh, you know, conclusion. I think this is a lesson for all of us in the, in the region and in particular in the African continent, that look, democracy can survive if we fight for it. And I give 
Because when Max Halley started his antics, the people came out and protested and held on to that view that they want a democratic, uh, a democratic election. And today they have, you know, they have also seen that come true. And the last thing I will say, I hope our political parties are learning a few things from Senegal, because anytime you speak in this country, everybody says to you, we have to learn, we have to learn. We seem to be a country that is perpetually in the learning process. So there are a couple of things we need to learn from Senegal, and one of them is that you can actually form an alliance, you know, and challenge the ruling, uh, the ruling party. So I say congratulations to the people of um, Senegal, they've made us proud. Yes, they made us proud on Sunday and in fact today. And I, and I think we are happy with the development. But I re-emphasize again, democracy is not receding. If the politicians and our leaders allow the democratic process to flourish, democracy will certainly survive in this part of the world. Hostin Aibe. Okay, uh, good morning, um, distinguished team on the other side. Uh, congratulations. I wish to congratulate you too for the victory that happened in Senegal. If I just congratulations to all West African states, congratulations to everybody. But let me, let me just tip in from what Ambassador Stop. I have about four or five institutions to amplify in this conversation. Number one is the people. The people of Senegal, the Senegalese, stood in defense of their democracy against all odds despite losing some of their citizens, despite losing some of their, their comrades, they stood, protected, stood by their own democracy. Again, in the West African region, with all due respect, Senegal tend to have the strongest democracy. And they prove again that they truly does have the strongest democracy. For reasons, because the power of the people is stronger than the power of the people in power. So the power of the people resonates. Again, beyond the people, it's not that other countries of West Africa don't have that vibrant citizenship. It's also the institutions, the civil institutions, particularly the military, who stayed off the political fray to allow the democratic institutions to settle the political uh, 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 impasse. The military stayed off and allowed the constitutional court saddled with responsibility to settle that impasse. Otherwise, probably what would have been here in Senegal would have been a different story today. But the military stood in defense of democracy. Congratulations to the military. And of course, congratulations to the, to the Constitutional Court, who told the executive arm of government, particularly in this case, Makisa, that you do not have the leverage, the power, to extend your tenure beyond April the 2nd. That your tenure ends April the 2nd, that election should hold as soon as possible. The Constitutional Court was very careful in their choice of words without necessarily giving a date for the elections. They, they pulled back the ball to the president to declare a date for the elections. But however, you, your tenure ends April the 2nd. Don't forget that the election should have, maybe would have been holding on December the 15th, <laughs> far away in the future. But the court says, no, you've got to hold this election within this period. Even though Makisa, with all his technical whatever, eventually in an attempt to build himself a name, which he had, sincerely, Makisa made a good name for himself from 2012 up to, this, up to the moment he started deciding on an allegation. Makisa benefited from the struggle of the same people, the Senegalese people, who stood with their democracy in 2012, when Ward wanted to extend his tenure for a tell 10 bid, and the people voted for him. And when Macky Sarr came to power, he said 12, I mean, seven years was too much for a democratically elected president to, 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 to have a tenure reduced to five. He did, and it was, it was applauded across the board. But soonest, the same Macky Sarr pushed the board to the parliament, who discussed and said there was need to postpone the election due to the, in quote, the crisis in an election. The crisis in an election on Sunday proved that there was really no conflict in the elections. The first time ever in the history of Senegal to run an election in Ram during Ramadan. Peaceful election that even the president himself, the current pre incumbent president himself, had to formally congratulate. It was clear, 57% Beyond 50 plus one constitutionally mandated. And of course, three is ECOWAS. 
I, you know, sometimes we say ECOWAS is not doing enough. At this case, I need to give it to ECOWAS. ECOWAS stood its ground to protect its own protocol. ECOWAS did not sit on the fence. You know, in most areas, ECOWAS tend to, to play diplomacy, I mean, behind the scenes diplomacy. In this case, ECOWAS did release a statement for the country to revert to the process of the election hearing, that the process must, be, must continue and complete appropriately. And of course, all the international community that caught in, that went in, that supported the peoples of, the, of Senegal, mean, it's, a, it's kudos. But beyond that, is that Senegal must again review its laws. Review its laws that one individual, the power on the president, I think is too much to determine the date of election. It is an absurd situation we must avoid a repeat of this in the next five years or 10 years' time so that the current, the, 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 the elected president don't also now, I mean, I pray he doesn't, especially that uh, Sonko is backing him seriously um, so that in 10 years' time we don't come back here and begin to discuss, uh, uh, discuss a Makisaw in 10 years' time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for that. Now, let's go beyond the euphoria and let's take a look at what a FIA government would look like. Uh, we know that the Danske Bank have already labeled him bad for investment. And they say so because he says that he's going to renegotiate deals with major investors. He's going to pull Senegal out of the CFR. Uh, several other commitments that he has made which con directly contradict a continuation of a Macky Sall legacy that would have happened through Amaduba. Now, my question to you is, uh, do you feel that this euphoria is going to be sustained? Will he be given the room by Western business, international business, to govern, uh, especially given what we've seen play out with people like Hakainde Hichilema in Zambia? Uh, same populist rise, but unfortunately, uh, the Western powers and the Bretton Woods institution made it extremely difficult for him to govern. I'll, I'll come to you, Ambassador Keshi. You know, I, I have uh, often quoted uh, a cartoon sometimes uh, that I saw years ago. I think it was a The Punch cartoon that says, um, now the elections are over, you can change your promise. The <laughs> truth of the matter is that when you get into office, you discover some new realities that you were not aware of before. You probably learn, begin to learn more of a number of commitments that your country has made that you were not aware of, you know, uh, while you were campaigning, because we do, not have a, we do not have the kind of system you have in the advanced countries. For example, immediately you become uh, a candidate in the United States. Almost automatically, you begin to receive briefs, particularly on security from the National Security Council. You begin to receive briefs on a number of issues so as to guide you so that when you become president, you know, you don't find yourself uh, confronted with crisis immediately and you have no clue as to what to do. But look, in the case of the new president of, um, uh, of um, Senegal, I have a feeling that he will learn very quickly. And I also have a feeling that the international community, no matter, you know, whatever they've been doing with, um, uh, with Senegal in the last couple of years, my gut feeling is that they would also realize that times have changed and things are changing. The young new president would definitely take a look at all the obligations of the country and where he can renegotiate. It is his right to renegotiate for the benefit of his people. And I'm confident and sure that he would do that. But where he has no leeway and he sees that a lot of commitments have been made and it is in the best interest of the nation. He has an obligation to keep it going because at the end of the day, I do not want to believe that every agreement signed by the outgoing president is not in the best interest of the country. Some might not be what they want to do. Some might be exactly what they want to do. But my best advice would be sit down, take some breath, go through the whole, examine the whole books and see you know, the maneuvers you can make in order to fulfill your promise. The most important thing is that the president, the new president made promises to the people. He must uphold those promises and see how he can drive development in, uh, in Senegal. That is the most important thing. Look, we have been too much dependent. We've given so much you know, to ex-colonial uh, um, uh, countries. 
And I think it's time that our presidents begin to find a way, a leeway, to ensure that the promises made to the people, irrespective you know, of previous commitments, are fulfilled. At the end of the day, he was elected by the people of Senegal and not by the Britain Wood institutions or by anybody in France or anybody in Washington or Russia. He was elected by the people of Senegal. And if he has to change policies, he must also find a way to inspire and mobilize the people of Senegal. And that is where communication becomes important. He must carry along the people. He must explain to them why they have to change policies. And he must drive the process. I mean, very well said, uh, Ambassador Kashi. I, I think Mario Cuomo puts this very aptly when, when he said, we campaign in poetry and we govern in prose. And this is time to, 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 to really do the hard work of governance. And I saw a lot of his promises linked up to the campaign. He just had 10 days to campaign because it was just released. Most of those promises are not possible. Uh, let's be realistic. You cannot get out of the CFA currency union that you have been for many years up like that. How are you going to buffer economic stability in the country? Th that one is not possible. But one thing is, do you think it is time for him to go after his enemies? And I'm going to count the enemies. There's a certain Karim Wad, who, the reason why all of this happened in the first place was because uh, the president then, Makisa, saw that Amadou Ba, the prime minister he was trying to put in to succeed him, will not go far in the election. So he was trying to look for an alliance with Karim Wad. And that didn't fall through because of nationalism issue, I mean, nationality issue and all of that. So is this the time for him to focus on fighting the man that jailed him? That's Makisa. Secondly, Let's talk about future possible fights between him and Sonko. Because, see, what Senegal has is two presidents as we speak. Faye is coming in as the Secretary General of PASTI, but on Sonko's mandate. And I say that advisedly. It was pretty much Sonko a lot of people were seeing on the ballot and see also what Sonko had gone through. Uh, how should they manage that fight when it comes? Because there's no way we're human beings. It's going to come up at some point. Despite the fact that they are so close that even I think Faye's son is named after Sonko, Faye's son is named Usmani, or one of them named the son after each other Usmani, how are they going to settle this when it comes up? And most importantly, creating employment for the teeming young people and very monolithic country called Senegal. I'll come to you, Ambassador Jokeshi, first, and afterwards I'll come to you, Mr. Osnaibe. Uh, your, your, your concluding thoughts, you know, uh, providing employment for the youthful uh, population that uh, propelled the victory, I think is the most important thing and where I would advise that they focus on what to do. As to whether he should go after his enemies, look, my best advice is don't do it. Don't do it. In the Western world, again, if we go back, I mean, there's, there's nothing. Trump, for example, has not said about Biden or, I mean, Biden is not even afraid of contesting with Trump again. He's not, nothing has been done to the gentleman. They've leave him to the court process. What I believe that the president should do is to focus on his mandate and find a way how he will manage his own team. You talk of his godfather. If the godfather is... Clever. If the Godfather is mindful of the situation, the Godfather is best advised to see how he can help the Godson and not to begin to create crises, you know, that would lead to the defeat of, I mean, that would create problems for the regime even before it takes off. But it's a question of the compromises. They have to begin to make some comp uh, compromises, you know, from the set go. And that would involve, number one, the cabinet itself, who gets what? Once that is resolved, the next issues will be very difficult to, you know, to take care of at the end of the day. We don't know have, and this is, you must understand this in about politicians. You do not, you do, we do not know exactly the agreement they entered into before this uh, election. But whatever be the case, look, things have changed. 
as soon as a president begins to consolidate his powers, a number of things changes. So the Godfather is best advised to see how he can help the Godson, you know, and ensure that this regime focuses on the, on the critical issues of development and taking care of the timid population of young people that brought them to power. The greatest mistake they will make is to begin to fight one another and to abandon the issue of development. If they begin to do that, they should be rest assured that the next five years they'll be out of power. Look, this is an opportunity for all sides in, uh, in the party, in the alliance, to see how they can rescue Senegal and set Senegal, you know, on a path, on a progressive path of development. But to begin to quarrel with one another, to begin to fight one another, to begin to go after your enemy or so-called enemy, my best advice is, please, President Faye, don't do it. Find a way to compromise and work with your godfathers. Okay, uh, Mr. Osna Igwe. Thank you so much. I, when you were talking, it just, you know, when we have these theoretical underpinnings, particularly in anglophone countries where godfathers usually usurp on their godsons, it's not necessarily the case in Francophone countries. Arguably, they may survive this first term. They will work together this first term. The only challenge would then be in this, the next five years, after five would have consolidated the power that he, he needs to be able to beat Sonko. As it is now, Sonko is actually the elected president because it's Sonko the people voted for. Yes. It's Sonko that mobilized. Yeah. Arguably, if Sonko was not released from prison or the both of them were not released from prison, we would not be talking about this or they would have won election while in prison. When Sonko was released from prison, you could see the momentum. That's, that's the day the election was held. That's the, that was the election day. You see the street was a goal with victories and all of that. Because, and again, just to put on record, that was also the reason why it was kept behind bar. Because some, for, some, so for some reasons, Makisa understand that keeping Sonko around was a threat to his perpetuality in power. I don't think materially now, that in the next five years, there won't be an issue. They may not be. If you listen to the acceptance speech of Fai, among other six key, I picked six key. Of course, one, he said he was going to fight corruption. Importantly, he was interested in restoring or working towards national reconciliation. Again, it is not pursuing after who did what or who didn't do what. I think he will follow that path. Because again, he's a young man, except the likes of Sonko does advise him wrongly. And I don't imagine that happening. He wants to fight corruption. He wants to lift the people out of poverty. So he wants to reduce the cost of living. And importantly, you know, question about uh, foreign, foreign powers and all of that. He said for him, he's interested in a win-win situation for bilateral and multilateral partnership with Senegal. Those are interests, and that's exactly what Sanko has been pursuing. That, come on, you, you, the, the way a manner in which uh, partnership had entered into with foreign entities is to the detriment of the Senegalese people. And that is what has raised the living standard higher. I was in Senegal in December, and I saw some, so I, 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 I didn't hear French, not to say I was speaking French, but my friend who speaks in English, who explained to me some of the conversation is that the people were fed up with the regime. The administration of Maki was over. And everywhere you literally went to was sunk, and it was basically young people. So this election was a young people election. If I go contrary to the young people's expectation, particularly dealing with corruption, lifting people out of poverty, solving the greatest concern of living standard. A price of fuel that we complain about in Nigeria is higher in Senegal. And you are wondering, and those are kind of the things that people bring on the table, that governance, democratic dividend should affect all, should be, should, be, should be domesticated in a way that everybody in the system enjoys the advantage of the, of the state, the natural resources of the state. And I think, the um, I me, a format, I mean, a task collector. He understands those narrative. He understands what brought Makiso to a grand level. He won't go the route that Makiso went through because he knows if he goes the opposite route, 
What happened to Maki will happen to him. After all, what happened to Ward in 2012 has already happened to Maki in the same Senegal because the will of the people is constant. They want good governance. They want democracy. They want their uh, standard to be, to, be, to be high. They want corruption to be low. These are the fundamental principles that in any case, we are all asking for in the West, in, across the West African countries, improve our democratic tenets. Let the, let, the, let the dividends of democracy reaches the hand of everybody, male, man, woman, young, old. Let it go to the urban, rural area. And if that happens in Senegal, nobody's going to be talking about uh, the conflict between Sonko and Faye. But I think that so Faye, will, it will be in the best interest of Faye to follow his advisement totally in a way that is, I won't call him godfather. He's actually like a son, not like a godfather in political landscape. Because it brought him to limelight. There will, be, there will be no fire without a Sonko. And that's the truth. Let's not argue it. But Sonko must also understand that leadership is a ladder. It has, it's a ladder that brought Faye up to this, to this level of becoming the president of a West African nation, a very fundamental West African nation. He must maintain himself as that ladder to bring more people to the platform. If Faye misbehaves in the next five years, I tell you, in the second uh, term of Faye, he may not be president of, South, uh, of Senegal. I can give you that word. When we are back, we may have this conversation. Okay. Simple question. Simple question I would like to ask. I mean, uh, the strongest credential that... Uh, you know, um, as Shiro Fai brings to the table, is that, well, he's emerged on the wave of populism. And his strongest experience is being a tax inspector in the real estate sector. He's never been minister. He's not held any, uh, he has not held any major public office. Would lack of experience be a major handicap for him? Let me start with you, Austin Aigbe, and then I would like to also uh, hear from... Uh, Ambassador on that issue. Would lack of experience be a problem? Fantastic question. I have argued mm -hmm. again and again. Age has no implication in how to be a good leader. After all, we have an old man in Cameroon, an old man in Uganda, an old man everywhere. What have they done differently? I don't want to, call, I don't want to say the um, uh, fire will not make mistake. Yes. Is going to make some mistake, but genuine mistakes and taking into um, cognizance that this is a mistake that has been made and readjusting his mistake. And like Ambassador said, communication, communicating with the people that, oh, we thought this route was going to work, but we discovered that it's not going to work, but we are going to take this route to see if it works. I'm not saying it's going to be learning on the job. Definitely not, not, not like that. Because Senegal is a small country in any way, in any case. A 44 year old man has seen to a great extent the ability to run a state, to run a country. What do you need actually as a president? A president's experience is the capacity to manage people and ensuring that the right peg is in the right space. So not just being politically uh, engaging in political appointment, looking at the right individuals, Economy is the greatest challenge of Senegal, for example. Look for someone who meets the need and appoint him and believe in that individual. That's about leadership. Leadership is showing the path and working towards the path. A b ability to see the future. And all the, all the things he said in his, in his acceptance speech, get towards that momentum. A state where every citizen of, of Senegal will live above a certain threshold, what, we may be called, what may be called poverty line. That the people's happiness can be restored. That is not going to fight people. It want reconciliation. And I'm happy with the other contenders, the other 18 contenders, who congratulated him, particularly the, the opposition candidate now, I mean, the ruling party as of this moment, who first of all quickly went on and congratulated him and said, well, you got the victory of the people. There is no need for those fights. It is usually conflict that has to do with fighting opponents that derail leadership. If I stays with it, it will learn quickly by the, by, the, by the people around him. For instance, Sonko, and of course, Sonko's friends, who were also... Uh, part of what Maki saw wanted to diminish, bring them on board, get them and put them at the level of maybe 
advisory committee or something and get advice for them. I'm not ask, I'm not saying that Sonko should appoint, I mean, Faye should appoint Sonko a minister. No, that would be detrimental to him, actually. Put the right people in the right places and the Senegalese, a few Senegalese I met in New York at a certain time, these, they are vibrant, they are intelligent. They will bring the best to driving the state affair and what the leader needs is driving the course of action and ensuring it works. For, for example, elsewhere in West Africa, a 40-year-old can truly rule. Congratulations to Faye, being the youngest leader in Africa. All the other older African leaders, particularly those that are beyond 80, has it really improved the living standard of the people? We pray for Faye to do well so that young people like us in Nigeria and elsewhere in Africa can truly look at him as a role model. I think that's where the trajectory should look at. Okay, uh, Ambassador Keshi. Ambassador Keshi. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Ruben. Fortunately, uh, Ruben, you have also worked uh, uh, in the presidency here in Nigeria, and you know very well that the, the presidents are not Lone Rangers, that they depend on the routine of uh, advisors to start with, and they also depend on the institutions of state to work with. And because Senegal has had a long history of democratic process or practice, I, I am very confident that the institutions are equally, you know, strong enough, you know, to assist the president as he settles down and he begins to govern the, you know, uh, the country I itself. So I do not think that fear that you have experienced, you know, that uh, is inexperienced. Yes, mistakes will be made, you know, if, if you listen to the history, uh, if, you, if you've read, uh, and I'm sure you have because I know that you read a lot, but if you've read uh, the autobiography of quite a number of presidents who found themselves in office uh, at certain time in their life, you will see that they themselves admitted that initially they made some mistakes in trying to, you know, take off. But once they've taken off and once the institutions begin to act, and once the advisors, the most important thing is to bring on board you know, number one, very good advisors, set of advisors. And then stuff your ministries, you know, with people you can trust and believe in, who can give you very good advice. Of course, as time goes on, the institutions of states are going to rally around the president. Nobody, I see, I'm sure nobody in Senegal today wants the president to fail almost immediately. So I'm very confident they are all going to rally around and begin to, um, you know, assist the president. Look, to run a country is a challenging, it's a challenging thing. And, and so I have seen, at least I've witnessed one or two transi uh, uh, transitions, and, um, uh, transitions, and I know I was very much involved with one. I saw how extensively the incoming president was briefed. And as often as these briefings took place, you could see that the new president almost instantly was beginning to realize the responsibilities that he was going to, you know, encounter or take over as president of a nation. So I'm sure that with time they will settle down. The institutions of state in Senegal will help. The core of advisors that he will bring on board, you know, are going to help him. So I, I just think that what we need to do is to just hope for the best for Senegal and its, uh, its people in the, next, uh, in the next five years. And hopefully um, we all particularly in the West African region, we learned some lessons from what has happened in Senegal in terms of the electoral process. And I think that's the most important thing in terms of the electoral process, that here is a country that has had a long history of democratic uh, experiment that they succeeded again because the president and the system allowed it to work perfectly. And wow. once that is done, I'm not sure the president will have uh, <clears throat> challenges. Well, very well. Lessons from Senegal. On that note, I would like to thank you very much, Ambassador Joe Keshi and Austin Aibe, for joining us on The Morning Show. Today.